And for the headlines, weather forecast, southwest monsoon to bring rain showers, said Pagasa. Local news, Gahig Ulo Siklarex, says ex-mayor Moreno. VIP hotel caught fire, leaving two injured. Normin cops arrest over 100 in week-long drug raid, seize millions worth of shabu. Representative Rufus was advised by OCA to guide Mayor Clarex. National News Marcos, the Ayungin incident must not happen again. Q fever transmission in the Philippines is now contained, says DA. International News Landslide causes house collapse in eastern China. Entertainment Look, Francine Diaz graduates from high school. More than 6,000 participants joined Bini Run in Manila. Sports. Fresh basketball uniforms for Gilas, Filipinas. A lawyer joins a Dragon Boat team to aid in recovery and cope with cancer. National feature. Chelsea Manalo pictured with Gloria Diaz and Margie Moran. What was the rationale behind constructing the Panama Canal? Good morning Philippines, Magana Umaga Luzon, Ogmay Adlaw, Visayas of Mindanao. Today is Monday, June 24, 2024. I am Athalia P. Saniel. Weather forecast Southwest monsoon to bring rain showers, said Pagasa. According to Pagasa, the Southwest monsoon, though temporarily weakened, is expected to cause rain showers and thunderstorms across much of the country, particularly in the western part of southern Luzon, including Palawan. Overcast, sky, overcast skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms are anticipated. Pagasa's weather specialist Veronica Torres mentioned that the monsoon might lose strength as easterly winds return in the upcoming days. Metro Manila, Cavite, Laguna, Batangas, Zambales, Bataan, and the rest of Mimaropa are likely to experience isolated rain showers or thunderstorms, while other areas of the Philippines should expect partly cloudy to cloudy skies with sporadic downpours or thunderstorms due to localized weather disturbances. Local News Gahig Ulo Siklarex, says ex-mayor Moreno Former City Mayor Oscar Moreno called on Cagayan de Oro 2nd District Congressman Rufus Rodriguez to assist and guide City Mayor Rolando Clarex Uy in restoring the dignity and decency of the city. Moreno made this appeal in light of the political alliance between Clarex and Rufus for the 2025 elections. Moreno expressed readiness in, to forge alliances with other parties willing to heed Rufus' recommendations for Clarex, aimed at improving the city's situation and integrity. VIP Hotel caught fire, leaving two injured. The fire at VIP Hotel on Vela Street in Cagayan de Oro City caused approximately 900,000 pesos in damages yesterday morning. Cagayan de Oro Fire District Chief of Operation Fire Senior Inspector Kyle Lawson reported that the fire initially engulfed the hotel lobby around 5.46 a.m. and was fully extinguished by 7.16 a.m. 21 individuals were swiftly evacuated from nine rooms where they had checked in the previous night. VIP Hotel Management expressed plans to cover the costs of relocating affected guests to Max Andrea Hotel in Kogon, but authorities are still investigating the cause of the fire. <laughs> 
Norman cops arrest over 100 in week-long drug raids, seize millions worth of shabu. In Cagayan de Oro City, the Police Regional Office 10 conducted a vigorous week-long anti-crime operation, resulting in the apprehension of more than 129 suspects and the seizure of approximately 2 million pesos worth of shabu from June 13 to 19, 2024. Their efforts including 50 operations targeting drug trafficking rings, leading to the arrest of 66 individuals and the confiscation of 297.582 grams of shabu and nearly 1 gram of marijuana, totaling 2,023,676 pesos in street value. Additionally, they conducted operations against illegal gambling, resulting in the arrest of 19 individuals and the confiscation of over 4,400 worth of gambling paraphernalia. The operations also saw the serving of warrants for 30 to wanted persons, including three on the region's most wanted list, and efforts to neutralize loose firearms, leading to the apprehension of 12 individuals and the recovery of 13 small arms. Police Brigadier General Ricardo Layog Jr., Regional Director of PRO 10 commended his team for their dedication and proactive efforts in combating crime in northern Mindanao, ensuring the region remains safe. Representative Rufus was advised by OCA to guide Mayor Clarex. Cagayan de Oro City Mayor Rolando Clarex Uy has officially announced the acceptance of one CDO as their political lineup for the city's 2025 elections. This decision comes after consolidating the support from the people of Barangay Carmen, known for the strong influence and residence of Barangay Nazareth, a stronghold of Cagayan de Oro 2nd District Congressman Rufus Rodriguez. Mayor Clarence emphasizes commitment by wearing an orange t-shirt, symbolizing the political identity of the centrist Democratic Party and their alliance with the Rodriguez for the upcoming elections. Former City Mayor Oscar Moreno urged Rodriguez to assist and guide Clarence in restoring the dignity and decency of the city, aligning with the announced political alliance of Clarence and Rufus for 2025. Moreno expressed readiness to form alliances with other parties, willing to listen and follow Rufus' guidance for Clarence, ensuring the city's welfare and integrity.
National News, Marcos, the Ayungin incident must not happen again. In Puerto Princesa, Palawan, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. commended the armed forces of the Philippines for their composed and professional handling of the recent standoff with the China Coast Guard at the Ayungin Shoal. During his address to Western Command personnel, Marcos emphasized that China's recent aggression during a resupply mission for BRP Sierra Madre should not recur, affirming the Philippines' steadfast stance on defending its sovereignty. He expressed gratitude to the troops for their dedication and emphasized their adherence to, prof to professionalism amid tense circumstances. Marcos underscored his commitment to safeguarding Philippine territory and exclusive economic zone citing international law support of the country's claims amidst ongoing maritime disputes. Q fever transmission in the Philippines is now contained, says DA. The Department of Agriculture announced on Saturday that the transmission of Q fever in the Philippines has been brought under control through the immediate depopulation and con condemnation of all affected cows and goats. DA Assistant Secretary Arnel de Mesa reported that this action, which included livestock in Pampanga and Marinduque, 
and surveillance areas within a 500 meter radius of the infected site was completed on Friday. Q fever caused by the Coxella burnetti bacteria primarily affects livestock but can be transmitted to humans through contact with in infected animals or their fluids. The DA, in coordination with the Department of Health, has initiated surveillance and contact tracing efforts to ensure public safety, particularly among farm workers. <music> International News Landslide causes house collapse in eastern China. Video footage released on Thursday captured the moment a house collapsed in eastern China's Anhui province during a landslide triggered by heavy rainfall. According to local authorities on social media, more than 179,000 people in Huangshan City have been affected by flooding, leading to the evacuation of over 10,000 residents from affected areas. At least 55 houses have collapsed in the region. Reuters was able to identify the location based on satellite imagery and corroborating videos. The exact timing of the footage remains unconfirmed. Recent days have seen about a dozen fatalities due to floods and mudslides in southern Chinese provinces during the peak of the annual flooding season. Chinese President Xi Jinping has also called for extensive efforts to combat floods and prioritize rescue operations for those stranded or affected. Entertainment Look, Francine Diaz graduates from high school. Francine Diaz, a Capamilia actress, celebrated a significant achievement as she graduated from senior high school. Star Magic shared the news on social media, highlighting Diaz's completion of her studies at Southville International School, affiliated with foreign in uh, universities. In a recent interview, Diaz expressed her commitment to balancing her entertainment career with her academic aspirations, revealing her desire to pursue a degree in business management. She emphasized the importance of having a backup plan outside of showbiz. Diaz is set to appear in the upcoming movie, My Future You, alongside Seth Fedelin. More than 6,000 participants joined Bini Run in Manila. Over 6,000 fans of Bini joined members Aya, Colette, Maloy, Gwen, Stacy, Mika, Joanna, and Sheena, for the Bini run held in Manila City on Sunday morning, demonstrating their unwavering support for the nation's girl group. Reflecting on the event's success, Bini Maloy expressed gratitude for the growing fan base, while Bini Shina echoed the sentiment of happiness over the event's positive reception. During the event, Bini members ran the first half of the route and later boarded a float to engage with their fans affectionately known as blooms supporters expressed delight at seeing their idols on the decorated truck describing the experience as a bonding moment and highlighting the group's strong connection with their fan community sports fresh basketball uniforms for gilas filipinas Nike unveiled new basketball uniforms for the Philippines men's, women's, 3x3, and youth basketball teams on Sunday. Promising a blend of athlete feedback and data-driven design, Nike described the kids of Gilas Filipinas as their most unified and athlete-centric yet. The jerseys feature blue with yellow accents for away games and white with red and blue details for home games, symbolizing the Philippine flag. Embodying Nike's values of unity, diversity, and inclusivity, the jerseys include the discrete Tagalog translation of any, every, all on the hem. The Gilas Filipinas men's team will showcase these uniforms at the FIBAP Olympic qualifying tournament 
in Latvia starting July. With the road jersey and fan tee collection available exclusively from July 3 on Nike.com, Nike Fort, and at Titan. A lawyer joins a Dragon Boat team to aid in recovery and cope with cancer. Attorney Joy Dimapawi, who battled stage 3 colon cancer seven years ago, is now actively involved in Dragon Boat racing. Diagnosed at 53, Dimapawi credits the sport of aiding in his recovery and providing a new focus in his senior years. He discovered dragon boat racing by chance while observing paddlers along Manila Bay's Bay Walk and decided to join the team upon recovering from cancer the following year. Lima Pawi emphasizes the importance of staying physical fit, expressing that without it, he believes he wouldn't be alive. Dragon boat racing in the Philippines, inclusive of all genders and ages, has grown notably popular since its inception in the 1980s, with numerous clubs and teams emerging nationwide and achieving recognition on the international stage. <music> National Feature Chelsea Manalo poses alongside Gloria Diaz and Margie Moran. Chelsea Manalo, the Philippines contestant for Miss Universe 2024, recently had the opportunity to meet two iconic Filipina Miss Universe winners, Gloria Diaz and Margie Moran. Miss Universe Philippines shared photos on their official social media platforms on Sunday, showing Manalo posing with former beauty queens. The organization expressed Manalo's joy in re reuniting with her personal idols and referred to Diaz and Moran as legends. Manalo is set to represent the Philippines in the upcoming Miss Universe pageant, aiming to secure the country's fifth crown following Catriona Gray, Pia Wurzbach, Moran, and Diaz. <music> Trivia, what was the rationale behind constructing the Panama Canal? After witnessing the relative success of Egypt's Suez Canal, opened in 1869, the United States aimed to establish a shortcut through Central America to bolster its status as a dominant maritime power with access to both oceans. Before the Panama Canal's completion, ships had to circumnavigate South America to traverse between coasts. Following the sinking of the USS Maine in Havana Harbor in 1898, the USS Oregon undertook a 66-day journey from the west coast, rounding Cape Horn at Chile's southern trip to reach Cuba. Had the Panama Canal been operational, this journey could have been completed in about 21 days, saving approximately 8,000 miles of travel. Originally considering Nicaragua for the canal, the U.S. shifted plans to Panama due to engineering challenges and concerns about volcanic activity. President Teddy Roosevelt acquired the failed French project in Panama for $40 million in 1903 marketing the start of an ambitious endeavor that would take over a decade and cost the U.S. approximately $375 million, exceeding initial estimates by 444%. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinay Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinay Rob News Channel, Kagayan Di Oro. I am asking once more to support and subscribe and turn on notifications for more updates and more info. Big favor, give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. That way other people can see and can see this and if you know anyone else that might benefit then share this with them. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.